Consonants. Now let's take a close look at consonants. Now, consonants contrast with vowels because consonants are made, as I said, when the air over the vocal folds is stopped or obstructed in some way. Consonants define our words. We use them for clarity, for distinction. So if you want sharp articulation, you have lovely vowels, given the correct value, and sound and shaping, and crisp, easily heard consonants. Consonants break then, so separate the singing tune of the vowels, if you like. They give outline to the words we use. Look at your diagram then and remind yourself that for clear consonants you need an agile tongue tip. The central muscles of the lips should be mobile and lacking in tension, so avoid this stiff upper lip. The lips are never too tight or spread too horizontally for consonants. Um, it should not be stretched beyond their normal position and the tongue and the dental sounds are centralised and not spread. And of course the nasal passages should be clear for the M and N and N NG sound. Now in normal conversation, um, particularly say between two people, conversational intimate speech, one doesn't require too much deliberate weighting of the consonants, but once we're beginning to address a group or an audience, then the consonants should be defined with more clarity and more definition. This increases the audibility, particularly the final consonant. For example, mob, mod, mock, rob, rock, rod, rot. Make sure, if you're addressing a small group of people, or particularly on the telephone, that the end consonant is crisp. Okay. If you're addressing a group of people in an audience and, you know, you, you're not mic'd up, consider the unvoiced s, s sound. Now, in large spaces where your voice has to carry, we need to replace the s, s, the unvoiced s sound with a voiced Z. So, for example, eyes become eyes. Pens become pens. Ideas become ideas. Calls, calls. Easy, easy. And so on. So, replace the S with a Z when your voice has to carry. Consonants really can be sort of paired with voiced and unvoiced. So we've got the unvoiced P, the voiced B, unvoiced T, voiced D, K, G, F, V, S, Z, Sh, Z, Ch, J, the. Okay, so a combination there, unvoiced and voiced, and that voiced means the voice motor is on, it's articulated, unvoiced it isn't. Let's look at the plosive consonants. P, T, K, CH, and the weaker plosives, the B, D, G. The sounds exploded variously using the lips and the tongue tip and the soft palate, which means the air is only partly blocked, it's breathed as well as voiced. Make sure that consonants are sounded not only at the beginning of words and end of words, but also in the middle, what we call the medial position. So we have top and we have top, but we'll also have Puppy, so the p in the middle of the word gets its full value. As I said, the nasal consonants m, 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 must be given their correct value. You try talking with a cold and find how difficult it is to get the clarity there. Practice the nasal consonants, but make sure there's no obstruction in the sinuses. L, 
can be a light sound when the tongue tip just touches the front of the gums and the sound passes through the side of the tongue, e.g. in lake, leaf, fly, sleep. Try that and just feel where the L sound is, where the L is shaped. And contrast it with a dark L, it's what we refer to as a dark L, where the tongue tip shapes, assumes a low resonance position with the tongue tip pulled back. For example, fill, cold, full, bulge. So contrast fill with lake. Feel where the tongue tip is for leaf and then say cold. So the mouth has to do an awful lot of work. Now consonants W and Y almost become part of the vowels with which they associate. So wine, will, yet, yes. And we have the aspirate consonant sounds. H, H, happy, hunter, holiday, and H, where. Now sometimes the R consonant gives people um, a little bit of difficulty, but don't worry too much about it. At the end of the word, it tends to assume a vowel sound, per, fur, and so on. The final position usually takes on a vowel quality, mother, father, sister, brother, and so on. In the middle of the word, it's just, the tongue tip is just moved once. Iris. Hurricane. Easy. And at the beginning of the word, the tongue tip just moves from the palate to the vowel. Red. Rain. If you really want to have fun and roll an R, as in real, robby, right, um, just put an, the er uh, before it and then practice. So, a uh, rain, a uh, really, a uh, right. And that's just to have fun and exercise. We don't usually use the rolled R anymore. Okay, so that's the consonant sounds. And remember, they will give clarity to your speech. They'll define words. And particularly if you're addressing a group of people or over the telephone, use those consonants. Now remember, don't get too hung up on the technical terms. Don't worry too much about getting the perfect sound. Just aim for clarity. Feel all the movement in your mouth. Use the mirror and see how the lips and the teeth and tongue move. And you should have lots of movement. As I said before, avoid this tight jaw and speaking with an English stiff upper lip because you won't have the vowels and consonant sounds at all. Now let's have fun. Let's put these uh, vowels and consonants together with a weather forecast. I'd just like you to practice this in your own time. Try to get the free, unobstructed vowel sounds. Don't let the vowel sounds go down the nose. And use the consonants where you think are necessary to define clarity. Try not to make them obstructive and just elocuted, but just naturally, clearly defined. I'll read it first and then you can have a go at home. The heavy storms have now abated, and most places may have rain again with some sunshine. On the mainland, many sports fixtures were cancelled as gales made the playing of games impossible. High winds damaged many weather vanes, and trains were delayed. In the Vale of Tame, the River Dane is in a full spate, and some minor roads remain closed. Okay, practice that. Have fun.